Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to one more episode of the Mini Diaries. Today is Saturday the 28th of August and I've already been on the road since the 20th. Mind you, that road is still in Greece, I have not left for my European adventure because I figured it would be quite prudent of me to actually run a test of what the trip would feel like prior to actually commencing with it. So, first things first, where am I? Well, in the absence of sufficient network and Google Maps, this will have to suffice. So, I left my hometown Thessaloniki on the 20th and I drove all the way to the city of Volos, spent a night there at a friend's place and then I carried on the next day till I made it to the tip of the bay of Pagasitikos, where I'm kind of like now. My destination there was a tiny little village called Agia Kiriaki, which is uh, right behind me across the bay. And it's a very unique destination in its own right, being a village on mainland Greece, which actually looks like it's on an island in the Cyclades. Um, the reason being is that that village was so remote, it still is, that up until the late 1970s, they had no road network connecting them to the rest of the country, so the only mode of transportation was boats and ships. This is why it has a very, very unique character. It's very small, very quiet, it's very beautiful, and it, it felt like the proper destination to go. My initial plan was to, to do camping somewhere nearby the village, on a beach and so forth. Again, this is going to be a trip um, on a shoestring, basically, in terms of a uh, budget. So, I called up a dive center there called Aqua Core Divers and I said, hey guys, is there a place or a beach nearby that I could actually set up my, set up my tent? And the guy's response was, you know what, you don't have to worry about a beach or a tent, if you don't mind, you can sleep on the dive boat. And I was like, sleeping on a dive boat, what would that be like? Best way possible to start a day. Good company, coffee, a great view, scuba diving. So, my accommodation for six days was basically a wooden deck on a boat, and it was very, very, very cool. Um, I couldn't get enough of it. Um, it was more comfortable than it actually looks and the morning wake up on that serenity of the harbor is priceless. Um, the actual experience of staying on the, on the village of Hagia Kriaki with Kostas and, uh, and Evgenia was something taken out of kind of a travel fairy tale. Um, I went there, started diving the first day, more dives the second day, diving was 
something that I hadn't been into for about three and a half years because of an accident uh, I had in the past and I really wanted to try it out. And it somehow happened that I started helping Costas out because I'm a certified dive instructor and one thing led to the next and I ended up working my way through uh, not just my dives but my stay which was pretty cool. Um, we came very close with Costas and, and Avianea. I was helping around with uh, with the house chores, like tidying up, washing the dishes. Uh, they did love me making coffee pretty much uh, uh, all day long. And things just kind of happened and clicked in place. And without me knowing, I ended up having a workaway experience without actually having planned one. Workaway is a very smart traveling platform that I already have a profile on whereby there are hosts and there are travelers. Now the hosts offer you accommodation and food for the duration of your stay and you, the traveler in return, um, pay off your stay by doing any kind of work that specific host um, may need. Now, in my case, being a dive instructor, I helped out with, um, with the dives. Uh, but uh, all in all, this was a very important part of my initial traveling plan. And it went so smooth, like really, really smooth. So it cost me basically next to nothing spending uh, six days in Nagia Kiryaki, which was a huge relief. And I'll never actually find a proper way to say thank you uh, to Costas and Evgenia for their hospitality there. Um, I would definitely be paying them a visit on my way back. Uh, because I would like to cut some more dives before I make it to Thessaloniki because diving in Hagia Kiryaki was absolutely epic. Check it out for yourselves. very very full and a very very nice and enjoyable week traveling with Bob right now through Greece but it's time to make yet another move because tomorrow there's a rough plan of catching a ferry and making it to the island of Evia so I think I better get going I just made the crossing with a ferry uh, to the island of Evia, which is, well, I'm not really sure if I should use is or was. Uh, parts of it are still beautiful. A huge part of North Evia was burnt to the ground lately. We had devastating uh, bushfires that destroyed some of the best pristine pine forests uh, in Greece and i'm basically at the limit of where the fire stopped so from now on there will be no more green glass vegetation and forests and scenic drives it's going to be a bit of a, of an awkward footage i will be capturing today i will be camping throughout i reckon i'll be spending two maybe three days in evia and i intend to go visit a beach that I have a very, very, very good memory of as a kid, which is called Limionas in central East Evia. 
And I'll definitely spend one night there with my tent, and it will be the first time I will be checking out this tent. And then I will probably go to Hiyadu. But for now, I'm somewhere where? I'm in Rovies, and I need to make my way to Limni. And then from Limni I need to cut across the mountains where the heart of the fire was. And then make it to Mandudi. Cool. So first things first though, uh, I have topped up with gas. I am not aware what kind of infrastructure is left standing where I'm going. So I topped up with gas. I will be stopping along the way to check if I can find places that I can uh, set up my tent because this is unknown territory for me. So I need to make at least a couple of backup plans because I will be roaming the island throughout the day and I need to pick up some provisions like I, need, I definitely need ice for my ice cooler and fruits and I think I have coffee actually I don't, I need to buy coffee where am I going without coffee? let's go Okay, I got me some serious. Oof. Okay, provision set, and I figured I could have made my shopping from the village at my parents' were, but I figured since these guys went through so much and their economy is in ruins, I will do as much as I can to support local shops and local businesses uh, during my trip through Evia. So I'm buying every single thing I need locally, always. So, first, I got me some ice. That will come in handy. There you go. Now, what do I have in here? I will have to go through my next couple of days. Definitely water. I got in there and I got me some bread let's see that will be a nice a nice um, snack fava beans puree almonds I got my luncheon meat sardines in oil peanut butter of course for the rough nights and in case I run into stray cats and stray dogs that uh, I always bring cat food or dog food with me. I love stray animals. I never actually own the pet, but I can't resist helping strays when I see them on the road. So I think I'm good with that. There you go. And it's time to make a move. so hot today. It is like seriously hot. Wrong, wrong side to the key. seriously beautiful place I don't have that much time to fully explore the place but it looks so epic I'm sweating like a pig come on let me out of here I need fresh air my on my face oh. come on Bob Let's go check the rest of the island out.
so let me check if I'm going the right way because I have no idea whether I'm on the right track or not so let's see I just passed a sign for a village called Purkuli and Purkuli should be to my left what's going on hold on let's check the 1980s google maps Συγγνώμη να κάνω μια ερώτηση για μαντούδια από εδώ πάει ευθεία και μετά κάπου πάει δεξιά ε Εντάξει, okay, έγινε, ευχαριστώ. It was as simple as that. No 4G, 5G, what have you? Done. Ask the locals, they know better. Okay. running out of time for today, I wanted to make it all the way to Limionas, um, that's quite a long way still, the network is getting rougher the further east I go, and I don't want to run the risk of um, getting caught by darkness in an unknown road or something, so I'm gonna make my way to the village of Gili. And I'm gonna stop there because I had a quick check on uh, on the internet, the very, very limited internet that I get here. And there's a beach called Karvuna that looks absolutely lit. And I'm really looking forward to checking that out. I hope I can make it in time. It certainly looks like it's worth my trouble. I will have to rearrange some stuff though because part of simulating this trip or running a simulation is that I realized that I have packed a lot of things in totally the wrong way so by the looks of it if I am to get to that beach I will have to rearrange pretty much everything so I have both my hands free there we are really so I can make it over the rocks because the way I have packed stuff right now I should go back and forth about four times and I'm not, it's not that I'm not up to it, I'm really tired, I have about an hour's plus worth of workable light and I don't want to run the risk so I'm gonna quickly rearrange my bag and I'll see if I can find a suitable spot for that, sort out my stuff and move on for the beach so hopefully that's a plan that will work. Right, so I need to rearrange pretty much everything so I can have both my hands free. So let's see what I can what I can leave behind. tricky this crossing actually is I don't even know if you can hear me with the wind and I'm not even sure if the bits is still accessible because I'm late which is very usual very typical of me So, if I want my drone and my snorkeling with me, that's going to be an interesting crossing from here. I will drop these and I will come back for them. So 
still, that's two trips. Okay. Up. See, well, that's why you need both hands and a steady pace. And stuff a man will do for the YouTube YouTube channel. So they stay here. And I'll come back for them. Being able to see the beach does not mean I've actually safely made it over. And I also got the wrong kind of shoes for this kind of climb. Okay, that's not a pleasant drop, so let's not. Come on. We can do this. This is the part where it gets tricky, because when when there's high tides the beach is completely cut off and I need to shut up and focus on my footing because if I'm gonna break a leg or twist an ankle here is the place to do it This is epic. Oh. On the side of a cliff, and I hope I got the camera on the proper way. Because if I've been recording backwards, I'm gonna be one pissed off mini diarist traveler. And damn, I'm tired. And I want coffee. And maybe I want my mama. No, just kidding. I mean, I love her, but no, it's okay, I'm fine. So, I'll set up camp here. So, this place is so, so beautiful. So, I'm loading everything. Oh. And going back for the rest, and there are tents out there as well. Okay, second round. So guys, it's almost the end of the day. I don't know what you can see. There seems to be a storm brewing back there somewhere and I just hope it won't hit me. For now, I got my coffee going, I'll be having my peanut butter and my fruits and I'll be spending a beautiful night out at the beach of Carvuna. I deserve a break and I'll catch you guys tomorrow morning over coffee. Take care. This is magic.